Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And welcome back to Hilal Live. My name is Faraz Patel. We'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. And of course, my colleague, Lukman Shadrach, for taking you through that first one hour. As the situation continues to unfold in the Middle East, this will be our main and only sense of concern in these parts of Hilal Live. Now, we ask ourselves the question, what is an open-air prison camp? It is the very air that you breathe that chokes you right here. You are a prisoner in your own homeland. You are not allowed to move. You are not allowed to do anything unless your occupiers tell you so. And then when you have your occupiers being attacked because it is within the rights of the armed groups of Palestine to defend what they have, to go ahead and make sure that the liberation that they are fighting for is there for all to see. The very same occupiers go ahead and cry foul. We've seen that with many of the Zionists to say, well, Hamas is there to destroy Israel. And I'd like to think that the people of Palestine don't feel that way. All the people of Palestine want is the liberation that they solely deserve. And then those very same occupiers then become the victims because they've never experienced it and did not expect what had happened over the past weekend. We now hear that in Gaza, bombs are continually to drop like rain in the summer. And again, the innocent are suffering within Gaza. It is a big juxtapose to what is happening, of course, within Israel and the amount of deaths that are happening within Gaza. To talk to me now about this, I'd like to welcome Saleh Hijazi, who is the Apartheid Free Policy Coordinator for the BDS, and he's based in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Saleh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and shukran so much for joining us. Wa alaikum salam for us. Uh, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, Saleh. I just want to start off, of course, with what had happened today and, of course, this morning within Gaza. It was expected because Benjamin Netanyahu, this was something that he had been waiting for. I mean, he doesn't sometimes even need a second invitation to bomb innocents within Gaza, but this gave him an extra motivation. But what strikes me is that he's cut off everything from Gaza. Gaza's already been cut off, but he's just put much more to the hurt that the people of Gaza feel right now? I mean, look, um, it's very important to emphasize the context, uh, the context of 75 years of settler colonialism and apartheid, uh, a context that South Africans know all too well, um, that European, white European settlers coming onto the land, taking it away, and then imposing a regime of oppression and domination uh, that brutalizes uh, kills and expels uh, people from their land. Um, it, 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 Gaza is akin to a bounty time, and the situation in there is very akin to a township. Uh, it's been really under siege since the 1950s. Uh, the siege has incrementally been uh, made tighter, uh, and over the 17, uh, last 17 years, we've seen this uh, form of siege that is kind of at its most criminal uh, and illegal, uh, according to international experts, the United Nations, human rights organizations, and so on and so forth, as, as amounting to collective uh, uh, punishment. Uh, this is the larger context. And when it comes to Gaza, it's also very important to remember that uh, uh, Gaza, since this criminal siege has been imposed around 17 years ago, has been constantly bombed. In 2008, in 2009, in 2012 again, in 2014, uh, the 52-day uh, offensive on the Gaza Strip that has left thousands uh, um, a, a, with the loss of life and, and injuries and uh, uh, destruction of infrastructure and so on and so forth. Uh, and then again in 2022, and this is a second time in 2023. Um, and, and, but, but this time is, is uh, 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 particularly dangerous. Uh, and, and you can see that because of the uh, the current uh, regime in Israel, apartheid regime led by uh, the, uh, Netanyahu uh, and the far-right uh, ministers uh, in his government uh, that are openly calling for genocide. Yesterday, 
uh, as the Israeli army was amassing its ground forces around the besieged and occupied Gaza Strip, uh, the Israeli minister of war, Yoav Gallant, came out to announce that he's cutting off all the essentials of life, uh, water, electricity, gas, and food, uh, and said that we are fighting human animals, and this is a quote, human animals, and that they will uh, act uh, accordingly. Uh, these, uh, uh, you know, this view of Palestinians as uh, lesser than human uh, or less human uh, is, is very prevalent. Uh, and it is at the heart of the Zionist, settler colon the Zionist settler colonial regime that imposes apartheid on Palestinians, is seeing them as less uh, and, and basically wanting to get rid of them. Uh, they tried to do that in the Nakba. And they tried to do that in 1967, and they continue with ongoing Nakba to do this. And, and this is just another uh, very violent episode uh, of a continuous uh, onslaught on the Palestinian people by a racist, supremacist uh, uh, regime. Saleh, I want to talk about West Bank, where you are right now in Ramallah. Uh, just the initial reaction to what had happened on Saturday, because I think maybe Hamas would not uh, say that because they were obviously the architects of that military operation that they did within uh, the occupied territories. But the, the reaction uh, in Ramallah to what happened on Saturday, because uh, the assumption is, is that there was a sense of a spirits that were lifted at that time, knowing that there is a chink in the armor of this great IDF that they portrayed to the world. Look, the Palestinian people are one. Mm -hmm. uh, we are only separated because of the settler colonial and apartheid regime. Uh, uh, which imposes fragmentation uh, as an essential tool uh, to control and uh, uh, dominate the Palestinian people. Uh, we're uh, uh, fragmented within colonized Palestine and, of course, outside of it. Uh, remember, the half of the Palestinian people are refugees, uh, those who are denied the right of return, who've been forcibly expelled uh, from their home in 1948 and 1967 and, uh, and through the ongoing Nakba. These are half of the Palestinian uh, people around the world. The other half is a, a inside of uh, a colonized Palestine and uh, is split into different fragments. The West Bank is one and the Gaza is the, is the other. And are not allowed because of the apartheid regime mm. uh, to be in touch. You have families on both sides. Uh, you have families in Gaza with relatives in the West Bank, right? And um, you have, uh, you know, old friendships. You have... Uh, in the older times, trade relations and so on and so forth. We're one community, we're one society. We're not together because of this settler colonial regime. And uh, the situation in, and the people in the West Bank uh, uh, react uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, onslaught, to the massacres, the uh, uh, same as, as being in Gaza. Of course, it doesn't compare, but here in the West Bank, uh, the situation is simmering and it comes to boiling points uh, at, at various points. 17 Palestinians have been killed uh, uh, since over the weekend, uh, since the uh, 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 Palestinian uh, uh, resistance fighters launched the, uh, 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 launched the offensive. Uh, it is uncovered by the media. It comes under the radar now because of the ultra-violence uh, by the uh, apartheid Israel uh, against Gaza. Uh, but uh, you have uh, uh, pockets of uh, uh, resistance here and there, popular, on the checkpoints, uh, in the streets, in the protest. Uh, I mean, in an hour from now, the students of Biazet University coming together across all factions have called for a massive demonstration in Ramallah. Uh, there are similar demonstrations being organized on daily basis in the different cities. Uh, also very important to note about the West Bank is uh, this is the scene uh, of the quiet ethnic cleansing mm -hmm. uh, that is continuously happening, the, the, uh, uh, what you call the ongoing Nakba. It's these smaller communities that are in and around the uh, illegal uh, colonies uh, that Israel has established in, in the occupied West Bank and who are slowly uh, being pushed away and forcibly expelled uh, from their homes by either armed settler militias or the Israeli army. Uh, one such community, for example, is the uh, community of Ain Samia. This is the source, the main source of water for uh, large parts of the West Bank, including the city of Ramallah, where I am. Uh, the entire community uh, has been ethnically cleansed uh, a, a couple of months ago. 
And since then, mm -hmm. uh, for us, uh, our water supply has been decreasing. Uh, over the last few months, uh, water runs out. Uh, basically, Israel controls, and I think this is very important, and I think South Africans will identify with this very much, that apartheid controls every single little bit of your life. You know, water, where you go, where you don't go, how you go, uh, uh, what you buy, what you eat, everything is controlled. Even marriage, who you love, and if you can be with your loved one or not. Israel, apartheid Israel controls. And when it comes to water, this is very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, we've been running out of water in my home. Uh, so the water comes only once a week. Only once a week. Israel opens the tap on the city of Ramallah only once a week. In some villages around, it can be once every two weeks. And you have to save water. But the water comes very little. And with communities who are there in waters and in and around water sources like Ain Samia, when you forcibly displacement, displace them, uh, this is a very, very dangerous sign. So when you hear the rhetoric of genocide mm. uh, in, in, you know, uh, from, from uh, uh, the Israeli apartheid Israel's ministers right now around Gaza, there is also this ethnic cleansing and the slow uh, expulsion of Palestinians and the cutting of essentials that are also happening. But perhaps it is not as spectacular and as violent as we are now seeing in Gaza. You just answered the question I was about to bring. Uh, of course, it was declared that Israel is an apartheid state, and yet nobody is doing anything to hold them accountable. They cut your water, and you only allow water for one week. If that's not a violation of basic human rights, then I absolutely do not know what it is. After the break, I continue my conversation with Saleh Hijazi. We're talking about what had happened this morning in Gaza, but of course, the situation as a whole. Do stay tuned. Welcome back to Hilal Live. I'm still in conversation with Saleh Hijazi. Saleh, I want to bring in uh, what has been the global reaction to what had happened. Now, of course, the West would side with Israel, maybe a sense of obligation they have to them. You're telling me of air, they're one in the same, and they are probably cut from the same cloth. But of here, you also told me that there's a sense of disappointment from many of the Middle Eastern and neighboring countries to Palestine within the Arab world. Uh, the, the reaction on the ground or the sense of feeling from Palestinian people, is it one of betrayal even now when there is that little spark of resistance towards the Zionist Israel regime? Um, well, look, let me start by saying, I mean, we are where we are. Um, and again, as South Africans know too well, because of the complicity uh, of the international community and the Western powers, the global north, in the crimes that are being perpetrated against our people, uh, there's direct complicity, whether it is the funding and supporting of Israel, including, for example, by arming and supporting uh, a, a Israel's apartheid forces, um, uh, or by shielding Israel uh, from accountability under international law. This is also a form of complicity. There's complicity for major corporations, uh, private institutions, businesses uh, in the uh, Western world and the global north in Israel. Uh, for example, um, a bulldozer company, JCB, is complicit in crimes, including the demolition of homes of Palestinians and the construction of illegal settlements. Um, uh, uh, other companies are uh, involved in the sports washing, mm -hmm. uh, like Puma, for example, by sponsoring uh, the Israeli uh, Israeli football team and, and other sports teams. Uh, these, the BDS mo movement calls for their uh, boycott, of course. Uh, so uh, uh, complicity is a major part here. And, and unfortunately, the complicity goes also beyond the global north, uh, that we're seeing increased uh, complicity in the global south, in Africa, in South Africa in particular, there are still trade and economic relations with Israel. Mm. Uh, there's still academic and cultural exchanges with Israel, for example. Uh, and this must end, uh, uh, especially in South Africa, we hold uh, to a higher standard when it comes to this because of our shared history, because of what we expect South Africans to know about apartheid and the call at the time of apartheid in South Africa to isolate the apartheid regime and hold it accountable for crimes that it was committing. We're expecting the same, basically, when it comes to apartheid Israel. Uh, now, you also have uh, Arab dictatorships, totalitarian regimes uh, that are also allying with Israel and signing these so-called normalization uh, accords. 
Uh, we don't feel betrayal from these regimes. We know that the people of the Arab world, we know the people of Africa, we know the people of the Muslim world uh, stand solidly with the Palestinians and that these regimes do not represent mm -hmm. the sentiment, the solidarity, and what these people want to say. Uh, will want to see the justice, freedom, and equality for Palestinians, the dignity for Palestinians. You know, because uh, our movement, the BDS movement, is based on three main principles. The indivisibility of justice, that justice, you know, when Nelson Mandela sees, says that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestinians, this can be applied across the board. Mm. There is injustice somewhere, there's injustice everywhere. Uh, it's the second principle is the intersectionality of justice, of, of, of struggle, that our struggle for freedom, justice, and equality is organically connected to other struggles for justice, freedom, and equality around the world. We see how Israel oppresses here and exports its oppression uh, to other countries around the world. And Africa is one of the largest markets uh, for Israeli weapons and military technologies and surveillance technologies that then dictatorial regimes in the continent use to suppress, repress, and oppress their own people. Yeah? Uh, the third and, and very important principle is the ethical, uh, uh, the ethical obligation of uh, do no harm and let no harm be done in your name and rectify if there is harm done in your name. And this is what comes to complicity, uh, that we do not expect the Western colonial uh, imperial powers to come and stand by the side of, of, of justice. We also don't expect Arab dictatorial regimes to come and st stand by the side of justice. But we do expect that people, freedom-loving people all around the world, especially those that are share our experience, and share the trajectory of where we're going, uh, and really move and work towards ending their own governments, their own institutions, organizations, including, for example, university, cultural institutions, sports teams, and other complicity in apartheid Israel. We must all work to isolate apartheid. It has no place in our world, not in Palestine, not anywhere, right? This should have done, been, been, been done and over with in, in 1994, but it has not. Apartheid was established in South Africa in 1948. It was established in Palestine in 1948. While one has ended, perhaps with a lot of still uh, major issue of, uh, issues of inequality and, and, and so on, the other one still persists with brutal oppression against the indigenous population of Palestine. Yeah. So uh, we call on the solidarity of people, uh, not of governments, yes. Yeah, I mean, Saleh, you bring up a valid point, right? In South Africa, there may be a freedom of movement, but economic freedom still exclusion for many of the majority here in South Africa, which is, of course, uh, people of color, but mostly that of black Africans. Saleh, uh, you raised an important point earlier on, and that is, of course, governments through the normalization of ties of Israel, especially in the Arab world, is occurring, but it's its citizens. And you see a, a, a huge spike in anti-Israel uh, condemnation through protest, anti-Zionist protest across the world. I was seeing in Al Jazeera this morning, even in Buenos Aires, Argentina, didn't expect it to happen in Latin American countries. So the message is spreading and that can only raise awareness and that can also put pressure on governments to, as you say, potentially enforce the boycott of Israeli goods. Yes, it's only through people power that we can uh, create the change that we want to see. Uh, it is not by relying on corrupt dictatorial uh, regimes, wherever they are. Uh, it is through people power. And we do have massive solidarity in Latin America, uh, even in North America and Europe. Uh, there are conscious people, freedom loving people there, unions, human rights organizations, civil society organizations who stand solidly uh, in solidarity with the Palestinians and try to end their government's complicity with apartheid Israel and take action, including at this very difficult time, uh, uh, to ensure that they support the Palestinian struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, same goes to in, in Africa, across the Arab world, and of course in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, we have a, a, the base, we have the people with us, uh, and, and, and this is the only way uh, that we are able to change. So, at, at these very difficult and dark times, very painful times, uh, we also want to see uh, uh, the hope that exists within it, uh, that 
uh, at these difficult times, we can amass that power and we can create uh, the change we want. And for this, and because I'm speaking to uh, South African uh, brothers and sisters here, is that there is a, a, a lot of reliance on you. And again, because of the shared history, because we know that you understand uh, what we've been going through, what we go through, uh, and where we want to go, which is shared, that South Africa takes a leading role in isolating apartheid Israel and, 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 and it, 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 you know, garners the support of others in Africa, like for example, in the African Union, in Namibia, and Senegal, and, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, to really grow that momentum. Uh, we want to see uh, eventually sanctions imposed on Israel. We want to see them now, you know, we're calling for an arms embargo, we're calling for an end of arms trade, uh, we're calling for legal targeted sanctions against apartheid Israel and its leaders. Uh, and, and, and we hope that uh, South Africa, given the history, can actually lead uh, uh, on that front. Saleh, one final question before I let you go. What happened over the weekend? The armed resistance groups who took the fight, who made that military operation into these occupied territories, is that the spark of hope that could potentially change the future of Palestine and allow that liberation to move one step closer? Absolutely, what is happening is historic, um, uh, by all means. Um, uh, but it's also very important to understand it in the context of Palestinian tradition of resistance. Uh, we have never once accepted uh, colonial and foreign rule uh, uh, since before the establishment uh, of the apartheid state of Israel in 1948. Uh, Palestinians revolted in various means against the British colony, uh, the British mandate that was ruling, the uh, big uh, uh, revolution of 1936, the big strike of 1936, is perhaps uh, uh, one place to start the story uh, and goes on until basically uh, uh, today, going through different episodes. Uh, we're continuously, you know, and, and, and this is uh, what we hope would provide inspiration uh, for people all around the world, that despite the hardships, despite the Im near impossible conditions uh, uh, under which we live, the brutal, uh, uh, a monstrous regime uh, uh, that kills and brutalizes and dehumanizes uh, every day that we continue to struggle, we continue to fight, uh, and, and hopefully we continue to inspire uh, uh, for a, a world of justice, freedom, and equality, which we all share. Saleh, we'd like to say shukran to you so much for joining us. We hope to speak to you again uh, as, of course, we continue to monitor what is happening. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, absolute pleasure. Saleh Ijazi coming to us from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. He is the apartheid free policy coordinator for BDS. After the break, I'll have your latest in news. Of course, we will be leading on what had happened during the day uh, in Palestine. So do stay tuned to Hilal Life.